Now, the row over the surge of migrants at the Belarus-Poland border is escalating. The European Union is threatening to blacklist airlines it believes are trafficking migrants to Minsk, while the Belarusian president is threatening to cut off gas supplies to Europe. We know about 2,000 migrants are stuck in freezing conditions in a forest that straddles this border. I have a lot to show you. Let me begin with Germany's acting foreign minister. We will continue to fight against illegal human trafficking by Belarus. No one involved in this human trafficking should go unpunished. This is a message to transit countries, the countries of origin and the airlines taking migrants to Belarus. They must know that the European Union is no longer willing to accept that. Now, the migrants are stuck here on Europe's eastern border between Poland, which is in the European Union, and Belarus, which isn't. There are also migrants at Belarus's border with two other EU countries, Lithuania and Latvia. And conditions on the Polish border are dire. Temperatures are freezing and many migrants are running out of food and water. Overnight, Poland says it found the bodies of seven migrants on its side of the border. Belarus is also reporting deaths on its side. Nearby is the BBC's Nick Beek. Well, this is one of many police checkpoints you see right along the Poland Belarus border where cars are being searched just in the distance there that is Belarus and so people coming through are being subject to checks in this exact spot or specifically just in the distance it's the place where the Polish authorities say in the past 24 hours the biggest attempt to cross the border took place apparently they detained 150 people and we're hearing that between 2,000 and 4,000 people are still stuck in the area between the two countries in, in lots of different places it would seem well the European Union claims Alexander Lukashenko who's Belarus's authoritarian leader is taking revenge for EU sanctions over rights abuses by offering migrants tourist visas and then helping them to the border. They point to the comments he made in May when he threatened to flood the EU with migrants. He didn't mince his words. He said, we stop drugs and migrants. Now you will eat them and catch them yourselves. That was May. In July and August, Lithuania saw 50 times more asylum seekers than in the whole of 2020. While in October, Poland recorded 17,000 attempts to illegally cross. Also in October, this BBC investigation uncovered a network of travel firms and smugglers who were organising flights and visas to Belarus as a package deal. They used social media to promise easy travel to Belarus and a promise of health insurance and a hotel. While President Lukashenko denies claims he's sending people over the border in response to those EU sanctions, and he's hit back at the EU with this threat. We have increased the volumes of natural gas pumped via Belarus. The Yamal Europe pipeline is full. We are heating Europe and they are threatening that they will close the border. And what if we block the supply of natural gas there? If they impose additional sanctions on us, indigestible and unacceptable for us, we must respond. Well, the European Union is now considering sanctions against airlines transporting migrants to Minsk. One of the targets is Aeroflot, which is Russia's state airline. Here's the Kremlin on that prospect. Such hoaxes about possible sanctions. Let's consider such crazy ideas hoaxes. We've already seen the statement by the company that it does not provide migrant trafficking and Minsk does not take part in it. Moreover, even if some flight companies do that, it does not violate any norms of international law. Meanwhile, this is the scene in Minsk. These are large groups of migrants in the city centre waiting for taxis to take them to the Polish border. The BBC's Will Vernon is in the city. Well, we saw large groups of migrants gathering here today uh, in the centre of Minsk, waiting for transportation to the Polish border. Um, they want to go to Europe, they want to cross into a Poland, but they don't want to stay in Poland. They want to go further into Europe. They mentioned the UK, they mentioned France, the Netherlands. Many of them said that they have relatives in Europe. Of course, it's not clear what fate awaits them when they get to the border with Poland, because as we know, uh, there are several thousand migrants stuck on the Belarusian side of the border with Poland, trying to cross Polish forces, not letting them through. But despite that, many of the migrants here were determined to push on and try and cross into Europe. And Will, did the migrants you spoke to have an explanation as to why they have flown to Minsk or why they've come to Minsk? 
Well, many of them mentioned that they'd been sold package deals. The vast majority we spoke to were from Iraq. Uh, and they said that they'd been sold these package deals for between three and four thousand dollars. And they said those package deals included a Belarusian visa and flights, tickets to Minsk. They mentioned that they were going through Turkey, going through Syria. Uh, and they said that once they got here, they were told that they could make their way to Europe and that the, the, the border would be open and the border would be unguarded. And in the last couple of days, we've been hearing a lot from the Polish authorities saying they're using things like SMS messages to try and communicate with migrants and say, do not come to our border, you're not going to get across. Presumably the people you've been speaking to are, are aware of those messages. Why are they not listening to them? Yes, they're aware of the, of the difficulties that they might face uh, at the Polish border. But these people, they say, are desperate. They say that they can't stay in Belarus. None of them want to stay here. And they say they can't go back to their home countries. So many of them were saying that we have no choice. And they, uh, it, it's bitterly cold here now. It's very cold, especially at night. Many of them were not prepared for the winter, didn't have appropriate clothing. Many of them were with small children. But there was a real sense of hopelessness amongst them. And they, they still feel that even going and attempting what may seem like a, a hopeless endeavour is still better than the alternative.